This custom phone case is making a predicted $20,000 per month revenue. Custom Phone Cases is a product that I've personally vetted to have a lot of potential in Etsy. It has great sales velocity, great profit margin, and it can be personalized. It's also a product that is perfect for my favorite type of design, which is pattern plus personalization. So it really doesn't get easier than this. In this video, I'm going to do a full tutorial on how to create a winning design inside of Canva, how to set up the product in Printify, and then how to set up everything in Hello Custom to automate the personalization. Essentially, everything you need to do to start selling personalized phone cases on Etsy. So before we can create the design in Canva, we have to get the print area from Printify. So we'll go over to Printify, go to their catalog, and type in phone case. Next, we'll find what product we want to do. In this case, I might choose this one right here. Scroll down, select the print provider, click on Start Designing. And in the bottom right of their editor, it shows you the print file requirements. In this case, it's going to be 1,201 pixels by 2,080 pixels with a maximum resolution of 30,000 by 30,000 pixels. So this tells us essentially the shape of the design that we have to design to fit properly onto this phone case within 30,000 by 30,000 pixels. So now that we know this, we can go over to Canva. And in this case, I'm going to create a design that is 3,603 by 6,240 pixels, essentially three times the size. I think this will have a better print than uh, the one third the size. Click on start new design. So normally before I create the design, I'd go through my entire market research process. Essentially, what designs do I wanna put onto this product? If you wanna see my entire market research process, I recommend that you guys go to my YouTube channel and watch this video right here. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to do my favorite type of design, which is pattern plus personalization. It's essentially exactly what it sounds like. It is a repeating pattern on the product, and then we add a personalization element like name. At the time of recording this video, we are going into October. So right now, Halloween is really popular. So a Halloween pattern phone case next month, November, Thanksgiving, so maybe turkeys or pumpkin pies or fall leaves. Uh, December, Christmas, you know, Santa Clauses, elves, reindeer, and even going into the new year, more evergreen patterns like floral, camouflage, cheetah, to name a few. And then if you're wondering, where do I find these patterns? I recommend that you guys go to a site called Creative Fabrica, where you can type in Halloween pattern. And then Creative Fabrica has a huge library of Halloween patterns that you can use for your designs. I'll put a link to Creative Fabrica in the description below in case you want to use some of their patterns. Alrighty, so I just went ahead and downloaded these six Halloween patterns from Creative Fabrica, and then we're going to use these as six Halloween uh, design variations for our personalized phone cases. And then for the design, I really like the phone case designs where like the top three fifths looks like it is uh, the pattern, and then the bottom two fifths looks like it's wood with the name on it. So to design that, I'm going to go ahead and upload one of the patterns. With the patterns, one thing I, I've noticed is design or the pattern density is really important where you don't want like a thousand jack lanterns and a thousand ghosts and a thousand witch hats on the on the phone case but maybe like three to five of each so you want to make sure that the pattern density is uh, correct so the top roughly three fifths is going to be uh, the pattern and then the bottom two fifths is going to be a wood texture so i'm going to go over to elements i'm going to type in wood and then I'm gonna scroll down to find a wood texture that I like. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click on to this one right here. I'm going to make it a little bit larger because this is you know, maybe a three inch wide phone case. So in terms of the grains, it would look more realistic if this was more kind of zoomed in. And I'm gonna make this about the bottom two fifths of the overall design. I'm gonna go ahead and click on text element because uh, I always add a layer of personalization. Uh, that can be name, that can be name and date, that can be name, the address, phone number. But in this case, it's just going to be a name. Uh, so I'm going to type in Samantha. And then one thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to change the font to more of a script font. So change the font maybe to engagement. And then also for this, I like it when um, if it's on a wood where it's not like a white text or a black uh, uh, text color, but you know, we're more like a dark brown, so it looks like it's almost engraved. So I'm gonna go ahead and click onto this here and change the color to uh, search for brown and then see if I can find like a dark brown that will work. Let's see, maybe, 
Let's go back with this one right here. I think that one's a good, a good starting point. That looks like it is an engraved Samantha on the wood for this phone case. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this right there. And then lastly, I'm gonna put maybe a line to separate the pattern from the wood. So it looks a little bit more realistic. Go ahead and click on elements. I'm gonna search for line. Got a line right here. And then I'm going to add this to right here at the very top of the wood. Make it a little bit wider for maybe a four to a, let's see what a seven looks like. And then I'm gonna change the color to be the same color brown as the text here. So now there's just something kind of separating the pattern from the wood. And then lastly is, I believe that this uh, graphic kind of wraps around the sides of the phone case. So I think like this will be the side of the phone case and over here to the left will be the side of the phone case. So I don't want this to go all the way over to the right because I might wrap around the side. So I'm gonna give it a little bit more room, maybe right there. Let's see. I kind of like how this looks right here. So this is a Halloween personalized phone case. See how simple that was? And then um, what I like to do was I like to do design variations. This is essentially, I'm just gonna have six similar Halloween uh, designs on one Etsy listing. So what I do is I go ahead and I duplicate this five more times. So it's three, sorry, two, three, four, five, and six. And then what I do is I add the other five patterns to each of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on uploads and then I might drag the webs here. I might drag the next one here, the next one for number four, the next one for number five, and then the next one for number six. And then again, design pattern density is really important. So I'm gonna come back up here. I think this one looks pretty good. I might adjust the webs a little bit. Actually, I think that's okay because it is max height uh, for this one right here. If, if you have a pattern where you need to make things smaller, you can always uh, make it smaller. I'm gonna do it to the webs one for you really quick. I'm gonna make it smaller. And then you can copy this and paste it. So now you have two of these elements. So I'm gonna make this one center. And then these should uh, connect. And if they don't connect, what you can do, a, a trick is, is you kind of flip this. So I'm gonna click onto this guy right here. I'm gonna click on flip vertically and then it should now connect because it is mirrored. Grab this guy and then adjust it up to be right there. And then maybe just make sure that this guy is in the back. Perfect, so this is gonna be the spiderweb one. I think this one looks good for the bats plus jack-o'-lanterns. I think I can make this guy a little bit less. Let's see, maybe, maybe that looks good way too much candy corn. So I'm gonna um, make this a little bit bigger. I think that looks perfect. And then I think that looks good. So these are gonna be the six phone case designs that we are gonna use in uh, this personalized Halloween phone case example. All right, so now that we have our six designs done, we can go back over to Printify. We're going to again, search for phone case. In this example, we are using this one here. Again, it is cheaper, but it has less variance. So, you know, pick or choose between the best seller or the cheaper one. I'm gonna click on to this one right here. And we're first gonna create the product on Printify. So we're gonna scroll down, click on start designing. And then the first thing that we're gonna do is click on product variants to choose what product variants we want to add to our Etsy listing. By default, it has, I think, one selected, but let's go ahead and select all of them. So now all iPhone cases are selected. Um, it might be that the other one has other phones. This one might just have the iPhones, just um, a side note. Click on update, and now we can add the PNG of our graphic here. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag in our PNG now. And then Printify is adding our PNG to this phone case design. Next, I'm going to drag in the PNG of our design. And then Printify is going to add the PNG of our design onto the phone case. Before I click on save product, I like to click on preview just to make sure the design looks correct in proportion of the actual product. And then also just to make sure Samantha was not rolling off to the side of the phone case. I think the placement here is perfect. And I think this actually looks like a really nice, again, personalized Halloween phone case. 
So let's go ahead and click on save product. And normally at this point, we would click publish where it would push it over to Etsy. But because we're gonna do something that I like to call design variations, we're going to click on save as draft. And then I'm gonna do that five more times for our other five patterns here. So what I ended up doing was creating a copy of that product five more times, so six in total, and then swapping out the graphic for every single one. So that way each one has one of our six design variations. And then lastly, giving them the title Halloween A through Halloween F. And then th this is if you guys wanna do design variations. So I'm gonna go through the whole process of design variations. It is more manual, it is more work, but I promise you it is worth it. If you watch this and say, hey, that is way too much work, you can go ahead and just publish these as six individual listings on Etsy, but I'll go ahead and I'll explain the pros and the cons. So one thing that we learned very quickly in our Etsy shop was, for example, we would create six Halloween phone case listings. They would use very similar titles, very similar tags, and very similar images or graphics. You would think that all six of them would get rank, all six of them would get sales, and all six of them had a fair, you know, equal advantage on Etsy. But what we quickly found out was is that they're competing against each other and typically only one of these six is gonna get rank and only one of these six is gonna get 80% of your sales. So the problem becomes is which one? Out of these six, which one has the potential to do 80% of our volume? And how can we put our attention into that one listing? Now the problem is, is we don't know yet. So one thing that we did early on is we did something that I like to call design variations. So knowing that one listing is gonna rank why can we not put all of our other five designs as variations on that one listing? So what we do is we create a variation called design or design variation, and we, and we say design A, design B, design C, E, F. Essentially, within each of the six listings, you can buy each of the six designs. So benefit number two is it's gonna increase your conversion rate. Uh, because the shopper can shop the listing and not the shop, that's one last click. They're able to click into design A, for example, and buy design C, where alternatively, they would have to click into design A, click into the shop, click into design C, and then buy design C. So that's one click for one sale versus two clicks for one sale. So that's another reason why I think our conversion rate is two to six times the Etsy average is because we use these design variations. To do design variations, we're gonna have to skew link these six designs and their 21 phone models into one Etsy listing. I think that is 126 SKUs that we're gonna to have to copy and paste from six different Printify listings into one Etsy listing. So it does require a little bit more work on the back end, but again, I promise you that it is worth it due to the increase in conversion rate and the increase in sales, knowing that only one is gonna rank. So let's go ahead and head over to Etsy. This is just our dev account, so don't mind these products here. We're gonna go ahead and click on add a new listing. All right, perfect. So in this video, I'm just gonna go over how to do the SKU linking for design variations. But if you wanna see how to do the listing images, I recommend that you go to our YouTube channel and watch this video here. And then if you want to see how to do the listing SEO, I also recommend that you watch this video here. So to grab an image, I'm gonna go back over to Printify. I'm going to click into one of our product variants, select the image, right click, save image, and then upload the image here. Perfect, so scrolling down, this listing will also need a title. So I'm just gonna go ahead and type in um, test title here. I might put, this is gonna be the variation A. Uh, about this listing, who made it? Another company or person it is a finished product. And then it was made to order. For category, I'm gonna type in phone case. Scrolling down. We are also going to have to put in a description. Perfect. And then going down to production partners, we will have to put a production partner here. Then scrolling down for the price point, we'll do 1749. Again, for the sake of the video, quantity one. Then for variations, we're gonna click on add variation. And the first one is gonna be called pattern. And then the second variation is gonna be called phone model. So scroll down, click on create new variation and then type in phone model. Click on add. 
So now I'm gonna have to copy and paste all of the different phone models here. Uh, but for the first one, pattern, we're gonna do pattern A, B, C, D, E, F. And then I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste all of the phone models here. All right, perfect. So I went ahead and entered in the following phone models. And then before we click on save and continue, we're gonna click on SKUs vary for each pattern. And then we're gonna click on SKUs vary for each phone model. And then we're gonna go ahead and click on save and continue. And then you can see that there is a SKU input box for each of the phone models for the A pattern, for each of the B pattern, C, D, E, and F. So I think there was what, 126 uh, total. So now I'm gonna have to go in and copy and paste the SKU for each of these 126 unique SKUs. So that way if someone buys, you know, iPhone 14 plus pattern A, it is a unique SKU going to a unique product on Printify. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. And then last but not least, perfect. So I went ahead and I copied and pasted in the 126 SKUs for all, I think 21 phone models and six design variations. I think it took about like 12 minutes to do this. So if you think about on average, maybe two minutes per product that you launch to be able to offer design variations, I think that's worth it. For the benefits that you get for an extra two minutes per product, that was worth 12 minutes to skew link all six of those products on Printify to this one product on Etsy. And then lastly, you wanna make sure that you turn on personalization uh, because this is a personalized product. Scrolling down, we will select a uh, shipping profile um, and then lastly returns and click on publish. All right, perfect. So variation A is live. The cool thing about this is we don't have to do that six times. We don't have to skew link 126 SKUs six times. Uh, we only have to do it once and then we're gonna make five more copies of this product here and then just change out the main image. So the main image on this one is variation A, the main image on the next one is variation B, all the way through variation F. So I'm gonna go ahead and click onto this gear icon here and click on copy. And this is when we're gonna uh, change out the main image for variation B. So to do that, we're gonna go back over to Printify. I'm gonna click into uh, variation B. And this is just for the sake of the video, I recommend you guys have like, your optimized main images. I'm gonna go ahead and save this image here. Go back over to Etsy and upload. Perfect, and then I'm gonna scroll down and then again, just change this to variation B. And if I keep on scrolling down, I just wanna show you that those SKUs are saved. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click on publish. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that four more times for variation C, D, E, and F. All right, perfect. So I went ahead and duplicated this listing five more times for a total of six listings. These are essentially the exact same listings, except for the main image is different. They're gonna have the exact same title, descriptions, variations, tags, but the main image for this one is variation A. The main image for this one is variation F. The reason why, again, why we do this is we don't know which of these six is going to take off. We don't know which of these six is gonna get the most sales. We don't know which of these six patterns is gonna get the best click through. So by having all six be launched on the Etsy and within each of the six, we offer all six variations. It gives every listing a fair chance to sell each pattern equally. So the cool thing about this is again, we have all six listings. Someone can click into variation A, for example, and then they can buy pattern F. So one note to have here is one of your images needs to be phone case patterns where it shows A and then what variation A looks like, B, what variation B looks like, all the way to F and what pattern F looks like. That way they know how and which pattern they want to select. So at this point, we've created the designs in Canva. We've created the products inside of Printify. We've created the listings on Etsy with the design variations. And now the last step that we need to do is get everything set up inside of Hello Custom. That way when these personalized phone cases sell, Hello Custom will automatically personalize the graphic for you. And if you're integrated with Printify, it will also automatically fulfill the product too. All right, so now to get these products set up inside of Hello Custom, we're gonna go over to Hello Custom click on templates, click on add new, and then this is where you can upload a PDF of your design. 
So we're gonna go back into Canva, and then we're going to download this variation A as a PDF. To do that, we're gonna click on Share, Download. File type is gonna be PDF Print. We're gonna do the current page, page one, because this is variation A. And then for the color profile, we're gonna keep it as RGB. The PNG that we uploaded to Printify is in RGB. Therefore, we want our PDF to also be in RGB. Uh, so leave this as RGB and click on download. Now we can go back over to Hello Custom and upload that PDF here. And what Hello Custom is doing right now it is taking that PDF and then it is converting it back to an editable template. This takes about five seconds to do. All right, perfect. So as you can see, Hello Custom took that PDF and then it converted it back into an editable template. So to create a template inside of Hello Custom, the first thing that we need to do is give the template a title. So for this example, I might title it Halloween Phone Case A. The next thing that we need to do is tell Hello Custom what product on Etsy does this graphic belong to. We do that with product variants. So we'll go ahead and click on this here where Hello Custom is gonna essentially pull in all of your Etsy products. And since we have these as SKUs within each of these six listings here, we can click into any one of the six where it is gonna pull in all of the SKUs and variants here. And since this is only gonna be for the pattern A, we only wanna leave the ones that say pattern A selected. So we're gonna unselect all of the ones that say pattern B through pattern F. And then go ahead and click on update. So now when any of those selected SKUs are sold on Etsy, Hello Custom knows to use this graphic here. And the last step that we need to do is tell Hello Custom what inside of this graphic needs to be personalized. And we do that with tags. So I'm gonna go ahead and click onto this text element right here. When this is personalized, I might want it to be right aligned. The max allowance, essentially how long the text can get before I want it to get dynamically smaller, might be that wide. And then placement might be right here. Lastly, I'm gonna tag this as name. That way when Hello Custom finds a name in the customer's personalization request, it's gonna uh, swap out this text here with that name. Now that we have a title, the SKUs are selected, the text elements are tagged, we can go ahead and click on publish. Perfect, so now we have a template for variation A. I'm gonna go ahead and do that process five more times to create a template for variation B through variation F. Alrighty, so I just got done creating the six templates for our six pattern variations. Now, when any of these six patterns sell within any of those six Etsy listings, Hello Custom will automatically personalize the graphic for us. So for example, if a shopper goes into this listing, for example, maybe they want to buy pattern variation F, phone model variation 14 Pro, and then for the personalization, maybe they want it to be Steven. Once this product is sold on Etsy, Hello Custom will automatically personalize the graphic and display it for your approval in our approval queue. You'll be able to see a thumbnail of the personalized graphic side by side with the Etsy order information. You'll be able to see the product sold, the quantity bought, the variations, and what the shopper actually typed in. In this case, I typed in Steven. Hello Custom took this order and made the following graphic. This is the correct variation. This is the correct personalization. And in the personalization, Hello Custom uses the correct font, color, placement, and best of all, the correct personalization. When everything looks correct, all you have to do is click approve and this product will automatically be fulfilled through Printify. That's pretty incredible, right? What used to take two to five minutes to update the graphic and then two to five minutes to update the order in Printify can now be done with a simple click of a button. Well, that's it for this video, guys. We essentially went over everything that you need to start selling personalized phone cases on Etsy. If you got value out of this episode, please give the video a thumbs up and maybe share with a friend who might get value out of it as well. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next week.